touchdown. It's through 50. He's got the speed. Touchdown. Welcome into the latest episode of Mac and Mose. Andy McNamara joined by the editor in chief of GoDucks.com, Rob Mosley. We are here to preview Oregon's upcoming road trip and game at Colorado in Boulder. It's the Ducks and the Buffaloes, two teams uh, kind of going in different directions right now. Oregon dropping a game last week at home against Utah, uh, well documented, the biggest home loss at, at Autzen Stadium for Oregon. Has a lot of uh, fans scratching their heads. Um, Colorado on the flip side lost their opener at Hawaii. They've won three straight, playing with a little bit of confidence. They're at home. So all of a sudden, this is a much more interesting matchup, I think, than probably even two weeks ago. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's tough to get a gauge on Colorado, really, because they haven't played a Power 5 team yet. So you're wondering, you know, what, what, are the, what are those means, wins mean? What's the significance there? But uh, if it's tough to get a gauge on any team coming into this matchup, I think it's Oregon right now. Just kind of what, what Duck team is going to take the field. Uh, is it going to be the one that, that gave Michigan State its best shot on the road, or is it one, the one that, that at Autzen last week, um, you know, really unfortunately laid an egg uh, against Utah. There's no better way to put it. So uh, this is a, a huge, significant bounce back week for the Ducks. I don't think anybody looked at the schedule preseason and said that Colorado game is going to have a ton riding on it, but it sure does. Colorado, like I mentioned, playing with a lot of confidence right now. They're at home. They're coming off a shutout win against Nichols State, a team that Oregon played a couple of years ago. Uh, last week, 49 to nothing. Their quarterback, a uh, little bit dinged up early in the season, um, has a sprained uh, joint in his shoulder, but was able to play through it last week, and, and he's expected to start again this week for Colorado. And the thing is, they've got balance. I think they're averaging better than 200 yards a game, both rushing and passing. So. Um, yeah, anytime an offense can kind of keep you off balance like that, um, that you know, it's, that has you on alert. But you know, really, uh, I think the matchup of, of, of Lufau as a passer against Oregon's secondary is going to be the one to watch there um, when Colorado has the ball because Oregon's just suffered some assignment breakdowns, communication issues uh, that, that have really put them in bad spots and left receivers wide open, left some running lanes wide open uh, for the Utah quarterback last week. So. Uh, they really got to tighten th some things down. Um, you know, they're, they're walk through Thursday. You know, fast Friday for the Ducks uh, is kind of you know, which is about to happen as we tape this. Is another kind of walk through uh, type day at a higher tempo, but but it's really all about assignment and things like that. And they got to take advantage of that and really and really lock some things down. You talked about the the corners in the secondary, also the safeties and the inside linebackers are going to have their hands full in this one with Nelson Spruce. He's their possession receiver. You know, he's a different player, obviously, than, than Cooper Cup from Eastern Washington. But, but we saw what Cup was able to do going across the middle, taking those short passes and making them into long gains, a lot of times because of poor tackling. Yeah. So uh, they've seen this sort of script before, the Oregon defense. But I go back to your point about, you know, is this the can, can the team that, that played at Michigan State, I know that was a loss, but, but can that defense come back? Because the second half of that game in East Lansing, the Oregon defense looked like looked like a quality FBS defense, and it, it's really the the lone time this year I think that that you can really say that. And I did think against uh, against Utah, tackling wasn't as big of an issue. Um, they shored some things up. It's sort of like you know plugging holes in a leaky dike, though. You know when when you get one plugged up, something else that rears its head. That's kind of the situation this defense is in right now. But uh, you know, so they got to put it all together. They got to find a way to, to to stop the leaks completely. Um, and. and so we'll see if they'll do it Saturday night. And one way to put some pressure, uh, take some pressure off the defense and allow them to, to be more creative and, and put more pressure on themselves is for the offense to, right. to, to get back to playing right. Oregon football, uh, you know, whether it's tempo, whether it's, it's gashing with the running game, utilizing those weapons. Byron Marshall uh, out for Oregon in this one. And that's, you know, I think that's a bigger blow than, than a lot of people nationally may realize. The only player in the Pac-12 ever to have a thousand yard rushing season and a thousand yard receiving season, uh, just an explosive player. However, you know, Oregon has, has had the next man up mentality uh, in recent years. They've had the athletes to be able to, to step up and step into opportunities. And you know, this, is, this is a week that, that that's gonna have to happen for this offense. Yeah, I wonder if this is a week where we really see Devin Allen step up and, and be more of the game plan. Jalen Brown, I think a guy who has been kind of fourth or fifth in the rotation, maybe get a few more reps in that role. You know, the return of Darren Carrington is looming not that far out there, but you know, not this week. So, um, you know, there's going to be some reps to be had. Um, you know, I wonder more if we see a little bit more of a Taj Griffin too, and, and the Ducks try to mix it up uh, 
uh, personnel-wise that way and, and rely more on their running backs. So, um, you know, yeah, as you say, sort of the good news is there's a lot of talent at the skill positions, but Byron's a warrior. I mean, Byron's is as competitive as it gets uh, on this team. And, and for a team that, that, that needs to, to be really competitive and sort of prove its competitiveness this week, uh, you don't want to be without him. So receivers, you know, as you mentioned, Jalen Brown is a, you know, maybe this is a chance for him to break into a, a more of a consistent rotation. He's been very impressive ever since he got here, redshirt freshman for Oregon. So look out for number 15 uh, in the whatever the lighter color is. We'll, we'll debut the, the uniforms, of course, before the game at some point tomorrow. Running back, uh, you know, hasn't been a, an issue really. Royce Freeman is is expected to carry the load as the as the primary back, but. Once again this week, the, the quarterback uh, spot is up in the air. And, you know, regardless, it's either going to be, a, you know, a not 100% Vernon Adams or, or the, you know, the number two quarterback in Jeff Lockett. Yeah, I mean, Royce can only do so much if you're not getting effective quarterback play and the defense can load up to stop the run. I think he's been experiencing a little bit of that. Um, you know, that first possession for Lockett uh, in, uh, last week was, was so encouraging. And then uh, they just couldn't capitalize it. He couldn't build momentum off of that and, uh, and sustain anything. So, um, you know, we'll see if, 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 you know, if he's the guy, can he build up a better comfort level, uh, you know, playing on the road um, and, 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 you know, when they're, they're running the Buffalo and everything, and this can be a little bit of a hostile yeah. environment, uh, uh, you know, pregame when they do that. So uh, it'd be, that'd be a tough situation to go into. I think Vernon's going to be champing at the bit to want to play. But coaches have also said, too, you know, they felt like maybe they put him in some bad spots by letting him play, um, you know, in, in the last couple of weeks. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if discretion, you know, came into play there and they were overly cautious this time after maybe thinking in hindsight they were, you know, overly liberal and letting him play earlier. But, but we'll see, you know, as, as Mark Helford said, you know, guys, guys like to state their case up to the last minute and, and make yeah. a case for, for being the guy. Well, that, that rhythm of the offense is, is so important, and we saw Lockie able to, to really move the team while they had to settle for several field goals against Georgia State. They were able to move the ball down the field effectively and, and get into a flow. That just never seemed to happen last week, yeah. and you know, uh, <coughs> one of the reporters out at practice earlier this week asked Scott Frost about, you know, is, is it an issue of conditioning? No, it's three and out. Right. You know, tempo does. If you go three and out, there is no tempo. Right. You know, and, and that actually three that's, play drives, five that's, play that's drives. That's when tempo can hurt you because boom, your defense is right back out there again, and they have no chance to rest. So, uh, it's you know, it, so much of of it is rhythm. It's still relatively uh, early in the season. This is game number five, but it's it really is a pivotal week for this team, and these guys should be prepared and ready to go. Yeah, believe me, they they track these guys with GPS, they know how hard they're working, how much they're running. Conditioning's not an issue for this team, but but yeah, it's just a matter of rhythm. And the, and as you, the point you made earlier, that takes the, the pressure off the defense. I mean, yeah. Let's talk about the, the way this team is built to operate top to bottom. Um, the units don't operate independent of each other. This this defense is built to, to make big plays, to be disruptive. That's one of their big watchwords. Um, and you can be, you can cut it loose and be more disruptive when you've got a little bit of a lead and you can really try, you, you've got an offense trying to do too much and then you can take advantage of that and you can get it out of its game plan. Um, you know, this defense, you know, no defense is built to pitch a shutout every single time out yeah. or, or, or hold a team to 13 points. I mean, in the current college football environment, that's just not going to happen. Um, you know, these guys are built to score, get up by a couple of touchdowns, and then defensively wreak a bunch of havoc. Um, and if you're not putting the pressure on offensively, you just really put your defense in a bad spot. So, you know, the defense has obviously got some things to clean up too, but the offense has got to carry the load. Um, you know, it's I, I think too frequently over the years when we've looked back at Oregon losses, the offense has gotten a little bit of a pass because, uh, you know, defense has always given things up and it's easy to sort of point the finger. But uh, in, in those games, I think if you look at them too, the offense hasn't held up its end of the bargain too. So, it's, I mean, it's a synergistic thing. I mean, they, they, they play off each other. Um, and when things don't go well for this team, you know, it's probably the hole that, that, that's broken down. And when you're balanced on offense and you have the lead, you, you have such an advantage because, you know, you can, you can do anything you want, essentially, in terms of, of play calling. And uh, when you're down by two touchdowns, like Oregon found themselves last week, and you're forced to throw, well, now the defense, right. I mean, they have a huge advantage right. because they, they know what's coming. So, and we've seen that with, with the Ducks. Turnovers were a huge issue last week, a minus three uh, turnover differential in a single game, which is unheard of for, for Oregon. And that, that, once again, I mean, that, that's one of those, you don't want to oversimplify all of the, you know, the, the game of, of football, but 
if there's one stat that you could point yeah. to, turnover margin. Yeah. And if you win that turnover margin, you're going to win yeah. the bulk of your games. You're going to win a, a lot of games. Colorado's a plus five, I, I believe, for the season coming into They've this game. They've already doubled so. their, their uh, interceptions from a year ago. Yeah. They had three last year, I don't, which I, is amazing. I don't they think Lufau has won in, in the last three games that they've won either. So, uh, you know, so Mark Helfrich was asked, I think, Tuesday by a reporter, you know, uh, that he's not getting sacked a lot and he's not getting intercepted much. What do you think about that? <laughs> his response was, well, we'd like to sack him and intercept him. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, obviously they, you know, they want to get back to being disruptive. I mean, there's just a lot to prove in this game for the Ducks. The quarterbacks have something to prove that they can get back to operating this offense at the efficiency where she's seeing. The defense has got to stop those explosion plays that have just been crippling. Well, we'll see, uh, we'll see how it all unfolds. Rob and I will be there uh, on Saturday night. Um, we'll be back uh, early next week to, to talk about this one, and hopefully uh, we have some good things to say. Oregon comes into this one 2-2. Two and two. They are ranked uh, number 24 in the coaches' poll. They are still receiving votes in the uh, AP Top 25, but they are out of the AP Top 25. Colorado is unranked but playing at home. In the meantime, if you'd like to uh, comment, you have questions for us, you can hit us up on Twitter. I am at McNamaraUO. He is at DuckFootball. Until next time, we'll see you. Gets the corner into the end zone for the touchdown. It's through 50. He's got the speed. Touchdown. Touchdown.